What's up guys? So today I want to talk to you guys about uh, setting up your own cloud network on a Windows machine. So what we're going to use for that is uh, Tonito. And what that is is a software you can just download online. So I'm just going to go to Google here. You guys can follow along. You go to Tonito. And you're going to want to get the server. You want to download Tonito server on your Windows machine. Save it. I actually already have it, so I don't need to do this, but I was just showing you guys this. So then you're going to run it. Okay, so what you're going to get here is uh, you're basically connected to the local host of it. So this is the, I, you're basically going to be setting up an account for this. And I can't stress how this is going to be more secure of a cloud network than using cloud networks such as like Google Cloud or even Dropbox or um, iCloud and stuff like that, especially when it comes to storing your photos and stuff like that, because their um, terms and services seem to change all the time nowadays. And when you're using a service like this, your account info is not going to be stored on their servers. All your account info is going to be stored on your computer, which will be acting as your server, hopefully. I hope you don't install this like on all your machines and make a bunch of servers. You should primarily be doing this on a machine you dedicate for drives that you want to be sharing as a server, not like your gaming rig or something. If you want to, go right ahead, but I'm just saying you probably want to make a server or just a dedicated machine for drive sharing. But anyways, moving on. So um, for this being safer, um, basically this is a fully encrypted service um, and Tonito again is not going to store your account info. Your server is going to store the account info and basically all that Tonito will be doing is acting as a DNS relay so that when you set up your account and you get a URL which you'll see at the next step um, that'll be a URL you connect to with the server and that's what you can use on an iOS app or all the other apps so that you can uh, interact with the server very simply um, so here we're gonna move on I'm gonna make a test account so I'm gonna go test uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine because I know there's a bunch taken you wanna check it's available okay you know what that's pretty long actually I'm going to see if that's available. Okay, there we go. That's better. And then you can set an email for it. Okay, so once you've got um, once you've done that, you're going to see you've got access to that URL now, which will be basically the DNS relay that's going to act so that it can point to your server. And then you're going to hit next. And I wouldn't recommend to go allow access to all folders. I'd probably recommend to just allow specific folders. Then you can add certain drives if you want to add drives or whatever you're going to do from there. It's your choice. Um, so uh, I'll go next. Uh, I, you know what? I'll just do this for now because this is just a virtual box. It doesn't really matter what I'm doing on this. And you're going to want to enable indexing. It's going to be a little more taxing on the system. So again, this is why you're going to want to make it be an isolated system, hopefully. But this will allow just for faster uh, browsing of all your files on the server. And then again, you have all the iOS app, I mean, not iOS apps, mobile apps. So you got iOS, Google, Windows, and Blackberry App World for all these apps. And so now here we are. We're welcome to the server. So this is the web URL. Um, I'm still accessed through the local host right here. You're going to see that right now it's on my LAN. Like this would be like my LAN um, IP. Um, but when you do this URL through, um, you know, your outside network, you'll be connected to your WAN IP. You'll see that your basically your WAN IP would pop up here. So what you can do from here now is you can go to settings and you can go to general. You'll see status of everything, you know, your IP address, uh, LAN IP, all sorts of things. You can go to account. You can change um, password, display name, change the email it's associated with, um, remote login. So you can add additional security, so uh, remote logins. I think that's for when you're doing it via um, your mobile apps. Uh, location for data storage. So again, if you even want your data directory not stored on this server itself, but you want it stored on a USB drive, you can do that too, and that can make it a little safer. And then you can change language, account, of course, uh, switch to a different account. So you don't even ha you can have different accounts on the same system. So you don't have to have the same account for everything. Um, then here is for the network. You can turn off the relay and then what that's going to do is this URL will no longer work. Basically at this point .tonydoid.com will no longer work and you're going to have to enable your own DNS relay by going like this 
uh, allow remote admin, new account creation, and you're going to need to enable an SSL without using their relay. And then you're going to have to do some advanced setups, which I won't go into today. But that's basically going to allow you to, if you have a business network, um, you can set up the cloud network without relying on .tonydoy.com, and you can make it just even one step safer. Um, and from there, you can change, again, the port that it's using. The default port is this port, which you will see. Um, this port is open on most routers already, so you won't need to port forward for this, so that's uh, awesome. And then you can enable the network. You can enable WAN to LAN redirect. So that's if you, if you don't even want your uh, cloud network to be accessed through the outside network, but you just want it to be LAN-based, which would be pretty weird. You wouldn't want to do that, but you can with this to do, I guess, simple LAN-based sharing if you want to. Then you can go to miscellaneous. Again, you can change all folders. You can set folders to indexing. Uh, camera uploads. This is a very neat function because uh, once you turn this on and then you download the mobile apps on your phone, you can start doing automatic uploads of your uh, photos and videos and everything. So basically, it's just a way neater feature of backing up all your... No, it's not going to, like, again, it's probably not going to, especially on an iOS device, it's not going to back up all your system settings and everything. You're still going to rely on iCloud for your system setting backups, but you're going to be allowed, or you're going to be able to back up as many photos and videos and never have to worry about storage, basically, because you're going to have a lot more available storage and not have to rely on, you know, the 5, 10, 15 gigabyte limit that um, iOS Cloud basically gives you. So, from that on there, yes, you have your ignore list, um, and then you can do iTunes playlist import. So this is um, really neat. You can only do this when you're running this on a Windows system. Um, you can't do this when you're running this on a Linux system, and you will be able to do this also on a Mac system. Basically, any system that supports iTunes, you can turn this on. You can basically enable uh, import, and any device that starts having iTunes playlists, you can import those playlists, and then all music, which would be hopefully just you would store on your cloud at this point, can go into the cloud and then can be made as in, you know, I don't have any music right now, can, but then we'll import the playlist and you'll have your playlist available on this. Not only the web browser, but your, you know, your mobile apps and everything else like that. So we'll go back to settings here. Then you have, you know, more, uh, what else have to have? That's basically it for miscellaneous. You have log. So you get to see who, who's logged in. You get troubleshooting log. And then just about. And then up top here, you get basically, it's going to show you everything here. You get mobile apps, desktop apps. So the desktop apps are basically um, apps that let you mount your shared locations as local locations in your file explorer, whether it's Mac or Windows based or even Linux based. Um, and then the mobile apps, of course, is just, you know, that's self explanatory. Then there's all the settings here. You can feedback and community support here you needed. And you can, of course, sign out from this account. Um, that will be it for basically now. Um, I will be showing you a quick demo of what the iOS app can do and, you know, just the photo uploads and everything like that. But that basically gives you a running server for your own cloud network. And the one thing I can't stress about this more is this will be highly dependent on your upload. So when you're away, you know, you're not within your LAN, you're just on an outside network on your phone, for example, and you're pulling data from the server, that server is going to be heavily reliant on its upload so it can how fast it can feed data to you. And then second of all, when you're giving the server data from a remote location, um, it's going to be reliant on your upload. So whether that's on a phone connection or someone's Wi-Fi, hopefully, because then you're not, you know, you're not going to rate your data, then again, it's going to be uh, reliant on that upload location for how fast you can start putting uh, data on that server and if once you're taking data from the server again vice versa so just keep that in mind when you're using this service that but nowadays um, the internet is getting better and better so I mean especially I'm jealous of you guys in America I'm from Canada right now you guys are getting sick upload speeds and you guys you guys are some of the first people who are getting the taste of Google Fiber services like this are probably going to be more and more available and I think it's a lot more viable of an option because instead of relying on services where you need to either pay for a certain amount of storage and all that like that and if you're a computer ways and you know how to offer your own redundancy and you already have running servers and you know a shelf in the basement somewhere like that then this is probably definitely something you want to consider because then it gives you even more control of where your data is going and who's accessing it and how it's going on and you don't have to worry about terms and services changing every now and then on these massive public domains like Google 
or um, you know a iCloud or even I'm not sure about Dropbox. I don't I'm not sure Dropbox is as much, but I know Dropbox you have to pay for storage, right? So again, that's just one of the workarounds from this. So um, that pretty much sums it up for that, and we'll go on to the next part for um, showing what the iPhone can do. Thanks. First thing you're going to want to do is you're going to hit this plus right here. You're going to enter your server credentials, right? And I've already got my entered, so that's good. Make sure everything's good. So again, that's there's this is an optional remote answer right here. So as well as a password in your server settings, you can set an optional remote answer to try and make it more secure if you want it like that. The next thing you want to do, and once you got your mobile uploads available on your server enabled on your phone, you're going to go to the right right here and you're going to click the camera. And from there, what you're going to see is you're going to see some settings like camera upload. You're going to turn it on. Upload only on Wi Fi. I do that, of course, because I don't want to rate my data. And then you're going to choose your server. So for me, I guess, right. It's there. It'll just see it. It'll just camera upload available servers. For me, I see it. There we go. Then it'll show you last upload, you know, the last upload count. And actually, look at that. For me, it's checking right now. That's perfect for the video. So you'll just see how it's doing a check right now just to see if I haven't taken any more videos or pictures on my phone. And it's going to back them up on the server. And we'll go done for that. Next, what you can do for the server is you can actually just click on the server here, or connect, and it'll bring up, again, the menu that we kind of see here on the web, uh, web browser. So what we see here, if we go to Files, is we'll see my drives. Yeah, they're named a little weird, but whatever. Um, so I'm going to go to Storage 2, right? And then I can go Downloaded Music, and I got all my music files here. And I can actually play them and stream them. Um, the reason why I'm not going to right now is because... Uh, the app I'm using to stream my phone to my computer, for some reason, just likes to also send the sound, and that's just not good right now for what I'm doing. So, but it works pretty good. I swear to God, it works really good. And then, so from that, you've got access to all your files that you're setting available on the cloud network, and you've also got your player, recent favorites, and you don't have access to the settings here, of course. So. They're not going to make you be able to have admin controls from a phone. So, for, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it on the phone. I'm going to log out here. Those are folders. But that pretty much sums it up for today, guys. That gives you a running cloud network for your mobile devices and as well as all your, you know, your other networks. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys.